So I got some spark plugs here and uh, owner's manual for the SNS T Series engine and uh, some stickers. And this uh, Sidewinder black. So this is touch up paint. Got a warranty. This needs to be filled out within 30 days, so I will fill this out. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the gas station. Today I got a pretty special product here for you. Um, if you're planning on buying a new SNS motor, um, unless you have them build your bottom cases with a, a Harley version, I have one here. I'm going to show you real quick. And I have the SNS brand new motor 111 sitting on the ground right now. I'm going to show you the difference between them. But when you go to run an SNS uh, motor, they usually have your oil line uh, kit that you have to buy with it, and you have to tap into your transmission. So you have to drill holes, tap into your transmission. Um, I went online and I seen a guy on YouTube that had this plate. Now I did some a little bit of research and I found this plate online so I went and bought it. So with this plate I'm able to attach it to the SNS brand new motor, drill the holes that would be the same as the cases, same as um, a Harley Davidson diagram as far as where the oil is going in and out. So I'm going to show you that real, real quick so you get more of a uh, understanding about it real quick. But let me just show you what we get in, inside of this product. So if you are buying a new SNS motor, you don't have to, if you drill out your transmission, holes in it, you have oil lines coming, they're exposed um, to the atmosphere, you run something over, you hit something, you accidentally hit it with your foot or something, you know, it could break. It is, I think uh, most of the time it's ran on the bottom of the motorcycle, um, you have the plugs that are on the bottom of the brand new SNS so it comes out of there and like goes routes up into your transmission so for me there's too many weak points there's too many things that can happen um, is it going to happen I don't know probably not but for me <clears throat> you get that oil line all of a sudden it comes off for whatever reason you don't notice it you're blowing your oil all over the fucking ground you slip with your back tire you can fall kill yourself hurt somebody behind you or um, you know bad day for your motor so this is what I have so let's check it out for me it's just too many weak points too many things that to happen too many variables when you have those oil lines exposed so inside this kit it comes with these it comes with um, this is how it is on the bottom of the SNS and then right here you have the plugs so it shows you to put plugs in there um, it shows you the plate how to bolt it in how to drill it out <clears throat> and it shows you the feed that comes from the bottom here the feed that comes from the bottom <clears throat> the vent 
and the return. And it shows you each hole that you drill out what it is. Okay. Now, I will show you a better diagram of that right now with the actual case. So, if you are planning on buying a new SNS motor, if you don't have them put the Harley Davidson cases on there and you're just buying it in the crate, <clears throat> consider getting one of these. Pretty good kit here. So, on the bottom of the motor, you're going to close those holes up. So, on, in this package, you get this is from Vulcan, Vulcan Engineering, by the way, company. So, you get some plugs, you get uh, the bolt up, the bolts to bolt up the plate. Um, let's see what we got. So this is um, their drill bit that it comes with. I think. So it comes with a drill bit. That's going to be a 3 8 Now, I called my buddy that got me this motor and he explained to me he was going to or, order me an oil line and stuff whoop de whoop long story short after I went online and I found this product I asked him what do you think about this and he told me I have never seen one of those I've put in a hundred SNS motors in I've never seen this plate he said buy the plate and I will buy it off of you so he's really excited about this plate also um, it's something new for us so what I will say is if you guys are watching this and you don't want to spend the $200 um, reach out to me I can send it to you you give me $200 to buy it and I'll give you 150 back so pretty much you pay 50 bucks to borrow it but you will need to buy these plugs to plug up the bottom of your engine um, but that's that's easy that's what you know five dollars worth of shit so if you do need to borrow this let me know and um, we can make arrangements for that so we have um, good packaging here so flat on this side it's going to bolt up you have your feed your return and your vent we're going to drill those you bolt this up to the side of your case so this is the sns engine here and this is a flat plate back back here so we're going to put some holes back here but people think that they can drill these holes <clears throat> without taking off your cam plate and your oil pump now let me tell you why that's a bad idea. Now, you probably know it's a bad idea just for the simple fact that there's gonna be metal cuttings in there, but people say they can put grease at the tip of the drill bit and kinda of get in there. Let me tell you why that's a bad idea. So these are oil passages. Now, when you drill in here, and you drill these out and you cut, and you tap into these holes this is where oil goes there's no way that you're gonna get in there so one more thing so when you have your plate on and it's bolted up the holes that are gonna be used is this hole that comes from the top here and this one goes right here it's just a straight hole into your case so even if if the metal dropped from here into your case here you know you're gonna have a hard time getting it out so remove the oil pump not a big deal guys okay now the next hole is here and then I put a hole right here I drilled a little bit now they can't have the same exact thing as Harley, so they just moved it over. And what I notice is this hole will actually be drilled on the inside of here. So after doing a little bit more looking, it looks like the cases are just built different. I think the SNS case 
is built different because yeah this is going to be the hole that it lines up with the harley davidson case which is going to be inside of here but on here on the piece of paper that hole that we're talking about that would be hard to clean out is actually goes into this one right here so this is going to be your feed and i think what's going on here is they moved it over but i think it's just routed differently on an sns because it does show it coming out here return up here bent from the top so and here's the middle of your case i think it's just a little bit different um, because they can't make it exactly like Harley Davidson. So yeah, I think if we take the cam plate off and everything, we're gonna be okay um, to clean all these holes out. But we will see when we get there and routing it. So, stay tuned. So that's what comes in the package. It's pretty cool. But um, <clears throat> same thing with your transmission line. You drill inside of your transmission and you make holes. You route that... Um, oil line kit from SNS, you're going to have some problems trying to get all those chips out. You're going to have to remove your transmission and everything inside of it and clean it. For me, it's easier to do the motor than it is to do the transmission. So first things first, let's remove this case. Now do your best not to scratch the thing. I didn't know that this one was gear driven. So really cool. We got gear driven. So I'm gonna take this apart right now. Um, first I gotta take these off. So without scratching this shit, I'm gonna do that right now. I have these um, from Motion Pro. And how it works is it's gonna go right here. And then this piece is going to be on the top and it's going to wedge this down with the spring we're going to put our screwdriver in here and pop it up i don't want to scratch this stuff i'm considering putting tape on here so i don't scratch it so i am going to put some tape so yeah so i got some tape just around here around here some electrical tape and just enough hole right there so i can put the screwdriver in and uh, pop this thing out what's cool about the sns kit is it does come with paint inside a little thing so you can do touch-ups on it so when you get the motor you're gonna get some paint with it to do touch-ups but we're gonna do our best not to scratch it we're gonna take them off one at a time tape here take this off then we'll tape here take this off and then we will continue put a little tape on here also well, let's try to get this thing. I want to do one shot, one kill here. Perfect. So I got them apart, didn't scratch anything, not yet. So these are not the SNS quickies. These are just a solid rod. So what I'm gonna do now is I, instead of buying, spending $200 on some SNS quickies, which I think are really good if you wanna go that route, I'm gonna take the tops off here and um, I'm gonna take my rods out so I don't have to buy a new set. So let's do that. So there's more than just to get those holes drilled out, you know, we have to do all this. Now, yes, this is a pain in the ass, but the, the best thing about these straight push rods is that we don't have to adjust. 
We don't have to adjust them. So what do we got here? I took, I removed all the bolts right now, over here. Um, three sixteenths um, Allen wrench size. We're gonna remove here, and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. Three. So here's the setup I have right here. Right here is my old rotor, and I've. I've had that for years um, whenever I need to I can just pull this out and I can spin my crank so we are going to get our rods here when they go up and come down when they're at their base at the very lowest point then we can break these free so what we have going on here is I have my wrench on here and I'm going to turn it now you won't be able to turn it if you have spark plugs in here because the compression will build up. I turned it right now. It turns very easily, which is a good thing right now. So, as soon as they come up, as soon as they come back down, we'll stop here, we'll unbolt here, then we will work on this other side right here. See it's coming up. So they were at its lowest point. I'm gonna go backwards until it drops again. And I can tell that this one's at its very lowest point. This one is just raised. Can't really tell, I guess, with the camera. See here, this is its lowest point. This is when it's raised. We will back it off a couple of turns you can see both of them are down so what we're gonna do now is we have the least amount of pressure on the push rod they're at the bottom of the lobe so that's you're gonna remove this one first because it's the one that can break because it has the least amount of threads or the smallest amount um, gauge of thread so we're gonna remove here remove here and then this one this one these four right here but don't forget to remove this is a little bit different than how the Harley is um, but yeah let's remove these two so I removed those two screws first those are 3 16 so you don't want to just pick up one side. You don't want to bend something. So we're going to crack it loose, crack it loose, crack it loose, crack it loose. These are half inch bolts. So you're going to do two turns, two turns, two turns, two turns, two turn, two turn, two turn, two turn. So you want to keep doing that and you want it to come up evenly. So when you take this off, don't just take the bolts off come up evenly on it. Now that we have this off, we can remove our push rods. And when we do, keep uh, the scratches off the tubes, we will handle those accordingly. So, because they'll just fall out. So watch out for that. So let's remove our push rods. Now, we're gonna mark this, even though it was never ran, if it was ran, you'd want to mark one, 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 two, two, three, three, four, four, because they wear right here and you want it to be on the same lobe. You do not want to interchange them just like with a car or anything. You can, I haven't really seen a lot of problems. I've done it before, but you're not supposed to. Mark, mark it, mark it. Mark it, you, you want to make sure everything goes back together, including the plate that goes on top of here, your rocker box. You want to make sure that it doesn't go on this side. So you want to mark the, the rocker box, but I just keep all the stuff together. Because this is brand new, I'm not going to worry so much about it. So what I did here is I put a little rag inside of here. 
as you can see and then I started cranking on it this is going to be a 5 16th and because of that now our timing is going to be off but we're not going to worry about that I'm going to break both of these loose so I believe this bolt right here is half inch um, and like I said before this is 5 16 here's a little trick so now that we have them apart we are going to pull the gear off now remember up on top we had the two bolts these are the long ones that go up there um, this is a little trick you can remove those bolts that were here on the rocker box the ones that we first moved removed and we're going to use them now to take off the gear to the same size we're going to screw it down until it touches the plate screw this one down until it touches the plate and then we'll do half turn half turn half turn half turn pull it off so that's what we're going to do now so my only advice when we're taking the gear off and the screw is screwing in obviously it's going to touch the back or the front of your oil plate if you don't want to see any marks here grab a thin piece of metal stick it in the back of the gear and then two pieces of metal or pieces of plastic and you won't get this I will do that with this one so I don't get no marks on the back of it okay we got the gear off obviously you know I had these marks from taking that gear off I put two pieces of metal behind this gear it's a lot cleaner nothing there so remember to do that one two three four five six so we're gonna go take them off in according and put it on the same way one two three four so it comes off evenly that's why we had these numbers here. so now we're gonna just slide off our cam plate here I already got it a little bit come on Bubba let's get off of here trying to do it with one hand so your oil pump o-ring make sure it's in there so I forgot to remove my tappets here so yeah remember to take these covers off you know I'm not going to worry about these o-rings over here, but these o-rings right here I'm going to remove them so I don't get any debris on them. I'm going to close this hole up with a um, Something a rag something so I don't get any debris in here and I'm not going to blow In here. I don't want to get oil everywhere, and I don't want to get any debris inside my gear I mean inside my bearing there so I'm gonna clean all this oil out of here actually I'll just go just like this all right so we got our plate here we have two bolts to bolt it up okay you have a long one your long one's gonna go down at the bottom because it's recessed your short one's gonna go up top here okay so let's get it in there. Okay. The instructions so the vent hole just like in the Harley is gonna go into the cam chest so that one's gonna go all the way through but these ones the feed and return when you get you're gonna drill slow pull the tip out um, I'll show you exactly what it says the feed and return hole feed return will intersect the drilled passages already in the case so the drilled passages that are over here you're gonna intersect those right now so you're gonna drill and when it goes forward just a tad you're gonna stop and start cleaning it out 
you're not going to go drill past that or you're going to fuck up your motor. So when you drill, you're going to find when you get into that hole. If you've ever drilled something before, just don't go past that, okay? Try to be as straight as possible. I can, I'm touching the sides, but as I'm going, I'm trying to find the sweet spot. Yep, I see a very, very small hole. I'm starting to get into the drilled intersection passage. Looks like I gotta go a little bit more. I'm putting the light inside of the passage. Kind of weird the way that it looks. It almost looks like it's not exactly lined up, but there is a hole in there. So we will go to the next one. It's clean, but I'm just going to go in just a tad more. And that should be it. Looks all right. one is going to be drilled into the case so this will go inside the cam chest
Okay. So that one's in the cam chest here. Now I gotta clean up. I'm gonna vacuum everything out right now, vacuum up all this aluminum, and that's gonna be the next thing. So the passages look great. I would advise to check for burrs up here because if one chips off, you know, it's gonna get down here. Um, I have very little mess to clean up. Um, make sure your bearing, make sure all your stuff, you know, just is cleaned up. Little shavings in there. And um, I'm gonna do my best to clean this stuff up right now. Now, don't use red rag in here because they'll leave this debris and you don't want that. You want a micro towel. Right now, checking for metal anywhere here. Any big pieces? So this is why you have to take your cam plate off because you need to be able to clean this metal up and make sure you clean the metal really nice because that's the whole reason why you're cleaning this up in the first place. So the shavings of metal are thin enough that it's very pliable. So I don't think just one little shaving is gonna crater your motor. These, um, you know, they're like really thin. They can move around and, you know, they're non-magnetic. So a magnetic bolt or something like that, it's not gonna work. So get all the stuff out now. So I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it. I had to take my tappet covers off so I can remove this and we'll start going back in with it. There's two things that I absolutely hate doing. Taking these covers off because it's so hard to get in the back 
and putting a throttle body on. Other than that, working on Harleys is pretty simple, but we're taking off these covers right now, and I remembered I hate doing it. So I'm getting ready to go back in with the cam plate. One thing we gotta do is we have to take off the oil pump. If you keep this oil pump attached to the plate and then stick it in, you will blow up your oil pump. You can go and um, find what to do in a manual. Maybe I will bring a manual out here and explain it to you. SNS is probably has their own um, way that they do it. They probably have um, a description if you go and buy their oil plate. It probably comes with how exactly to put on your oil pump. So we're going to remove it. Then we're going to put our oil pump into its slot, right? We're going to put it in there with the O-ring. We're going to shove it in there. Then when we put our cams and stuff inside of there and we start to bolt the oil pump up, what we're going to do is we're gonna go one two three four but we're just gonna barely get it to where the face of the oil pump is touching the plate you can go and read in the manual but we're just barely gonna get it bolted up then we're gonna grab my rotor we're gonna turn the engine turn the engine pistons going up and down turn the engine then we're gonna go one two three four I'll probably do one full turn. Then what I'm gonna do is turn the engine, turn the engine, get it nice and so it sets up. Then we're gonna do it again and again and again. We might just do a half a turn, turn the engine, half a turn, turn the engine, half a turn, turn the engine, half a turn. Because if you just bolt it up like this, it's gonna be kinked it could be kinked and what happens is you end up blowing up your oil pump I've done that before and I have a video on it if you go and check it out it says do not do this something like that and I left it up there so people can learn hopefully not do the same thing so um, you you know I have a manual it will be down in the description you can download the manual you can read exactly how Harley wants you to do it I just kind of already know at this point now how to do it so let's let's get into it and um, let's get this oil pump apart here and I do I break all the bolts loose I do the same way when I come out. You probably don't have to, I just like to do it. So here we go. Okay, we got that apart now. Let's get our bolts out of here. Make sure you have your washers there with it. Okay. Go put this oil pump in right here you have a little magnet which will pick up any um, hardened any metals that are magnetic not aluminum but any metals that are magnetic this little magnet will pick it up okay let's go do this all right let's bolt up our oil pump here so o-ring goes in first Pop it in, make sure it's nice and flush in there. I'm having trouble putting this in, so 
have my little pump in there, have my plate, have both of these here. Let's try this again. Get it lined up. Got it upside down. And then we have the last guy here. Okay. So there's timing dots right here on your cam. You got one, two, one, two. Now. See the dots? You can't really see it because of the lobe. But they need to line up exactly. Make sure they line up exactly with each other. Now let's go put it in the let's go put it in the bike. Alright, we got the pump in here. Next, we don't forget about our O rings. Okay, now ch double check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make sure you have the same amount of O-rings in there. And let's put our cam plate on now. Double check, make sure your cams are still aligned. I'm using the bolt. I'm using this bolt to hold this so it doesn't slide out. Now, there's already assembly lube. If you're redoing this, put some assembly lube. And um, yeah. I wanna look at those bearings. Says made in USA. I hope these bearings are S and S. I could look a little harder, but they're new, and I don't need to take them out. Now, our long pump bolts. Cam plate bolts, shorties. In the description on this video, you're going to see a manual. You can download it. You can go to SNS. You can call them. You can get instructions on how to do this. 
This is how I do it though, okay? I went and tightened each bolt by hand, back it off a half turn. Every single one by hand, tighten it, back it off a half turn. The pump bolt, same shit, back it off a half turn, okay? So each one of these bolts, I went all the way down, and I backed it off a half turn, okay? So at this point, I'm going to go rotate the engine. You're going to see this spin. Okay, now we're going to tighten up just the outside of our cam plate here. We got it set at a 110 inch pounds. 110 inch pounds. Okay. I'm just doing a little bit. to one two to three So now we're going to torque the oil pump, 30 inch pounds. Actually I'm doing about 10 inch pounds. Now we're going to do 30 inch pounds. Okay. 30 here, 30 here, 30 here. Now we're gonna spin the motor. Spin the crank again. Now we're gonna crank it to 40 inch pounds. Spin the crank. Fifty inch pounds. Spin the crank.
60 inch pounds. Spin the crank. Now we're going to do 80 inch pounds. We're going to spin the crank again. I'm going to do 100 inch pounds now. Spin the crank. One twenty inch pounds. Spin it again. The gear right here out for twin cam. You flip it the other way it's for the M8. You could be using your rubber mallet. So what you want to do is you want to clean the old um, Loctite that's on there, little wire brush. go a little bit of red loctite on there Okay, my two dots are lined up perfect. I'm ready to put it, the bolt in, some Loctite. 
put this bad boy in here just like this. All right. Now we're going to I got to pull this out because it's hanging up on something in there and I don't want it to pinch a piece of metal whatever it might be hanging up on okay so I know it's nice and free now it's able to spin so I am going to get this all torqued up get this torqued up to 35 foot-pounds We're going to torque this one up to 25 foot-pounds. And that's that. Now, And double check. Make sure your lines right here are all good. We're torqued up. Everything's torqued up. The SNS doesn't have kind of what the Harley Davidson one has. The Screaming Eagle, it picks up from a different spot. But we're going to put the oil pickup towards the front on each one of these and hopefully that's right so we're going to put our pins in Everything's good to go. Ready? Okay, so I put my cover on. I put the covers on up here. Um, I just do these. I just torque um, the covers up here by hand. Um, don't put too much on it, but because the ones back here are so hard to get in the very back, I just do the, those ones by hand. Um, so, I torqued them up. I torqued this guy up. Put the little plastic back over it. Okay, we got our push rod cover on or our tappet cover on. Excuse me, we have our tappet cover on. Um, I got one O-ring in there. Make sure your O-rings are not too dry. These ones are still wet from the oil for the original insulation.
So, one more thing. I almost forgot the most important part so you don't crater your bike. And I said it. I said, I wonder why this one's up a little bit. When I was talking about the rocker, arm was a little bit up. I did not put it on wrong, but you can put it on wrong. The reason why we number, other than where, on a push rod, the reason why we number them when we come out is so we can put them back in the same exact spot. Now, just so you know, there's two long push rods and there's two, I'm, I usually use quickies. The solid ones are better. Um, there's evidence to show that, but I have the solid ones in here and I've I haven't had solid ones in my motorcycle probably for eight years something like that so there's two different sizes short and long so when we look at it this is what we're gonna see when you look at it they're gonna be flush now the long one as you can see it's gonna take more area to go from A to B because of the angle rather than on the back one it goes from A to B it's more straight up and down so your longer push rod is going to be the very right one and the very left one here okay so when we set the push rods down then we get them to size here that's how much longer that's how much longer it is so we're going to put the long one for whatever reason it's marked red over here we're going to put that in the far left one and in the short one over here now I put it in right I caught myself when I came over here and I measured it real quick but what we're looking for is we're looking for flush what's gonna happen is if you don't put it in right I mean you're gonna fuck shit up but you're gonna see this one completely sticking up and one completely short Okay. Now we don't need that. So, here we go. Remember, more angle, long one. Straight up angle, that's going to be the short one. Down here, just a little bit. Lube everything up down there other side here okay Put a drop of uh, some red Loctite in there. Another drop of some Loctite. Tight. Yeah, we're using red. I don't have no blue, but we're just using a tad. Now remember, we have to turn the crank to make sure 
that all the pressure is relieved. I know right now, I can turn it a little bit right here and I think make this one go down some. So there's still, there's no tension here, just a little bit, very little. So they're both as far as down as they can go. For whatever reason, this side seems to be a little bit lower. But um, we're going to put it in now. Snug it up here by hand. Now we gotta torque it up. So, down in the description, you can download the manual, and right here on page 284, it talks about the torque spec for your rocker arm support bolt, okay? So, obviously, you know, these are the Harley Davidson ones. See, these are the Harley Harley Davidson ones. They're just bolts. Where the S and S is a little bit different, but as far as the size and the torque, it should be around the same, 18 to 22 foot pounds. So again, you can go here on page 284, and you can read all up on it and your sequence. You know, you have a sequence on each side here, one, two, three, four, and then you have one, two, three, four. Now it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna go sideways. We're gonna get 18 to 22 foot pounds right now. We'll start off with 10 foot pounds, and then we'll go around again, and then we'll final torque it up to 22 foot pounds. This is gonna be for the rocker arms here, okay? Okay, let's torque it up to 10 foot pounds here. That's 10 foot pounds. Torque this one up to 10 foot pounds. Ten foot pounds here. Ten foot pounds here. Okay. Let's crank it up. Twenty foot pounds. Actually, we'll just go to 22 foot-pounds here. 22 foot-pounds. 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 22 Okay Looks good, sounds good 22 foot pounds all the way around here So we have these two small bolts. I'm gonna put a little bit of a Loctite on here. Okay. A little bit of Loctite in here.
I'm going to do a 110 inch pounds. We'll do a hundred and twenty inch pounds here. Okay, hundred and twenty over here. All right, she's all bolted up now. Got your O ring here. Hundred and twenty inch pounds. Okay. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty. I just want to say thank you very much to all the savages that stood by, watched this video till the very end. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And if it does help you guys out at all, please like and subscribe. I have many more videos coming. Um, a lot of parts sitting in my garage right now. So I am building that 111 in my 2014 FXDC. So I appreciate you guys for being here, sticking around to the very end. I'm here at work. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, comment section down below. I'll get back to you. I always do to everybody, even the people that are going to talk fell. Um, I'll get back to you too, sir. You guys have a good one. And uh, the gas station's fucking out.